I'm Dimitar and welcome to the second series for concept design for, with Blender for architects and designers. So in this video we'll cover the basics of how we add objects and we edit them. So if we move this object out of the way we can add a new object by going to this menu add objects and we see the selection that we have we can add an icosphere a cone and so on but for, for most of the time we'll be working with either a plane or a cube as a basis point what you notice in Blender, which is quite different than 3ds Max, Rhino or Maya, is that instead of starting with, for example, a point, drawing a plane and then extruding it, we start with a predefined object that we then need to modify in any way that we'd like it to be. So, if we start with a plane, and I'll erase all the other objects, X, delete, to modify it, we need to go into edit mode from this menu down here. And now all the vertex, edge and face information is exposed to us so we can change it. So we can move any of the vertices, one or two. We can move any of the edges or faces. And to change the selection between vertices, edges, or faces, we can do it here on the bottom menu again. Uh, so that's for faces. So now we can move faces, or excuse me, edges. And now we can move the whole face. So if we go back to edge mode, we select one edge and in this menu here, again if you do not have it, what you need to do is press the plus button here on the side and it will show up. We have some tools which are different than what they were in object mode. What we would like to do is extrude this edge. So we click extrude region and we can look into the Y axis and let's say one unit minus and it has to be minus because the arrow is facing that way so that's positive values and negative values are in the opposite direction so now we just created a new phase by extruding the edge again if we go into this edge we hit E and then X or Y press 2 or 1 and now we created another face. If we go to the vertices, we can do the same thing with vertices. So if I would like to extrude this vertex, extrude, this time it's in the x direction, 1 and minus 1. So now we see we created a new edge by extruding a vertex. I will extrude this vertex as well x minus 1 and now we've created two new edges so now we can create a phase by selecting the two edges by clicking first edge select clicking the first edge shift click the second edge and we can either hit this button make edge face or as you can see it highlights the shortcut underneath which is F so these menus they're context sensitive and as you saw I tried to hit F while I was here and it wouldn't work so my cursor needed to be in this 3D space So we can also extrude faces if we click the face button. We select the face, extrude region. And what you notice is that it actually snaps to a direction which is the normal direction of the face. So we can see exactly which way it went. Now if we try another surface, make let's just move this 
So it's a little bit more extreme. We go back to face select. And we have this face here that we would like to extrude. We hit the extrude region button. And again it snaps. And on the bottom you can see it says along normal. So once again we can change the direction in which the extrusion occurs by hitting either X, Y, or Z keys. So we can just see what happens. So that's along the X direction, along the Y direction, and along the Z direction. So if we extrude region again, and if we decide we don't like to extrude anymore and we hit escape, we'll notice that it looks like there are some extra faces there based on those middle dots there. And if we move the cursor up, you would be in fact correct. That's because the extrude command, it's actually a macro in a way where it does two things at once. One is it extrudes and then it moves it up along the normal and in any, any other direction. So if we wanted to extrude something and then we changed our mind, we need to hit undo. So again, if I extrude, escape, we see that we have all those extra faces. All we need to do is undo. However, doing extrude and escaping is also useful sometimes. So we'll do it again. Extrude, escape. Now if I scale this item, we can see that this is connected to the previous item. So if I just move it slightly over, we can see what we just achieved. So that's about extrusion and connecting faces. So we can connect any edges in any order that we want. For example, if we click this edge and this edge and we hit F again, we see that we've created a new face. We hit those two edges. We see once again that we've made two faces. I'll just undo those two for now. So the next important command to know is loop, cut and slide. Again, it's in this menu here, which has most of the essential commands that we'll be using. So if we click it, we can see if we hover without clicking anywhere, the first we need to choose in which loop cut, where, where we would like it to make the loop cut. So let's say we want it here. If we click, and then we can slide it along in either direction. If we want to keep it exactly in the middle, we need to just hit escape and that stays exactly in the middle. Now it's important to note that loop cuts only work with quads. That is any face that's made of four vertices, just like all of these are. If we have faces that are made from three vertices or more than four vertices, loop cuts will not work. So let's just erase this create another mesh plane and the shortcut to the admin here is shift A but again if we don't want to remember that just yet you can just go to add mesh plane so we'll go to edit mode we'll create loop cuts again now if I move my scroll will up or down, we can see we can change the number of loop cuts. Similarly, with the keyboard, if we type a number, let's say five, we also can change the loop cuts and with the backspace button, we can reset the selection. So let's say we want two. And then again, you saw I hit escape to keep those exactly where they were aligned to be. And Let's do another loop cut. The shortcut is Control R for loop cuts. And I hit Escape to keep it exactly where it is. So now we can select this edge and we can see what happens when we start to move it up. 
let's select these edges and extrude them. The shortcut for extrude is Z. And we want to extrude them two units, no, one unit. So again, I'll extrude these as well. So another way to lock our axes is with the middle mouse button while we're in the middle of a command. So if I click my middle mouse button now, we see we lock an axis. So again, we want to be one unit. We need to reverse direction by, by pressing minus. I removed it. So now, if we go to vertices, we can move some of these vertices up. Or we can also scale them. Same thing with here. If we want to, we can move these vertices down. And here we can shift click to actually have both the scale and the translate manipulators on at all times. And in fact, this is my default setup. So now we can either move these or scale them all at the same time. So if we want to further subdivide this, again, we can do another loop cut, Control R. Maybe this time we want to have it quite close to the edge here. So now if we shift select these vertices and we move them, we add more definition to our, to our object. So I'll go back to object mode move this to the side, shift A, plane, and we'll show another way to edit objects, which is by subdividing. So now if we go to edit mode again, in here we see the next command down, which is subdivide. Now, most of the commands, if not all, once they're executed, we can go back and edit it. That only works with the previous command and not more than that. So here we see we have a little window that says subdivide. So we can change the number of cuts and that increases the resolution. So now if I select the vertex, we can move it up and down. Or we can do the same with a face. I'll just undo this couple of steps to show you another feature, which is soft selection or proportional editing. If we enable it and we select the vertex, we can see that it doesn't only move it, but it softly moves everything around it as well. To change the radius of the influence, while we are active in the command, if we scroll up or down with the wheel on the mouse, we can change it. And again, since this is just the last command that we did, we can modify all the elements that we did during it. So we can change the value of the translation. We can even move it in a... Um, Let's change it in this, yes, yeah, so we, we can either move it in all the other axes as well. And another cool feature is we can actually change the proportional size as well. So we can see exactly what we're doing. And we can change the curvature, which has a different influence and impact onto it. So again, if we want to move one of these down, one of these up and now we have a shape that was subdivided and it started with a plane. So hopefully this is clear enough to show what's the typical workflow of starting with Blender with either a plane or a cube or a face rather 
and extruding it, loop cutting it, and creating new vertices, and also subdividing it. Thank you, and see you next time.